you want to tell me how you think it went? It went relatively well. I was expecting the Supreme Court-ists, the, uh, the robes, to ask some very critical questions of both sides, and they did. Um, one of the justices seemed very concerned about the things that have been going on in this case, so it seemed like they may have had the facts wrong about what was actually happening. Um, one of the points that I wish had been brought up is that, as far as public safety is concerned, a parking enforcer testified on the stand during the three-day hearing that the only safety issue she's observed has been safety uh, of the Robin Hooders, because people that are violent want to hurt them based on the rumors and the lies that have been told about them. So uh, I thought that that would have been a good ca uh, thing to point out, is that there is a safety issue here, and it's people attacking Robin Hooders. There are multiple criminal cases against people attacking Robin Hooders. Um, or people that they think are Robin Hooders. Um, so it is, I thought in that sense, the, uh, the full uh, learning experience from this whole experiment of Robin Hooding hasn't really come to fruition, but you can expect the courts to be a little bit behind people and their own understanding and analysis of the situation. Because mm -hmm. how hard is it to just organize all those facts and have all, those, uh, all that knowledge about what has happened? Um, John Meyer and uh, Charlie Bauer you know, have put a good amount of time into it. John Meyer much more, because Charlie Bauer, if you saw in the last uh, few court hearings, was not all that prepared, did not have many of the facts right. They were juggling things between different attorneys at that law firm. So, um, yeah, it was great to see so many people come out for this very important, very special case. And I thought that the justices seemed a little uh, naive as to what their own laws are here in New Hampshire. Some of the conduct they were describing was stalking under the law, yet they did not bring it up. It was John Meyer who brought it up. Well, there is a law that deals with that. Um, it seemed like they were very confused about those sorts of things. Um, and about like what qualifies as assault and uh, also um, they kept citing a case that I believe was overturned um, I think it might be Madsen or Madison and it's related to abortion clinic buffer zones um, we do have a place that does get protested with anti-abortion protesters in Keene I don't believe that they perform abortions there uh, but I've never heard of safety issues there either, though people have summoned the police over that he's sort like of thing. The, like the, uh, Any other thoughts? Washington. Oh, it's uh, a great day for Robin Hood. I, I can't uh, wait to hear what the decision is, and I'm expecting, of course, that it'll be in our favor, because there's really no reason for a decision otherwise. And it's great to see the bureaucrats come out and try and defend their institutions. One of the things that Charlie Bauer said was that we shouldn't arrest people for doing these protests, even if they commit assault. Even if they do uh, possibly injure someone, that they shouldn't be arrested because that would be squashing free speech. And I appreciated that sentiment, though I thought it was maybe set under the duress of trying to uh, defend this case from a very strange perspective on, uh, on his end. All right, thank you. Can I grab you for a second? Questions? I overheard you saying something or uh, whispering something under your breath uh, during the hearing. I thought it was interesting. It was about public officials. Can you explain what you, were, what you meant by that? Well, yes. I think the distinction here should be between someone who is a public official and someone who's a private person. One of the justices had asked, well, what would happen if someone was following you know, me around? And as a public official, while it would be uncomfortable, I think that's entirely protected by the First Amendment. So the distinction should always be made between people who work for us, the government, and state and public officials. Uh, there are different rules because they are our employees. So, um, you know, it's, it's probably, I wouldn't enjoy it, but if you're a private private citizen and someone follows you around, you do have recourse. If you're a public citizen, I believe that you don't have recourse because that's what the First Amendment is. A court case was referenced today by the Supreme Court called Garrick. Uh, yes. You're Garrick. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> How does that have relevance here? Um, so in that case, uh, it, we took it all the way to the First Circuit, um, and basically there established that we have the right to film uh, police officers in public in the execution of their duty. And I'm going to jump out because I'd love to say hi to Charlie Bauer, the Thank lawyer you. on the other How side. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. you too. You still get a year trophy, huh? <laughs> Good to see you too. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Thank you, I enjoyed it. How did you feel it went today? Very interesting. Thank you. I'm here because I'm a Robin Hooder from Keene. The city has brought a, uh, two lawsuits against myself and five other people, alleging that we uh, harassed, intimidated, threatened their employees, which was nonsense. Uh, that did not occur. And in fact, they had three days of uh, trial where they were able to submit evidence. And, uh, 
what we had done, and we were able to show videos which contradicted pretty much everything they said. So the uh, trial judge uh, dismissed the case and appealed it to the Supreme Court. So how do you feel about that, the fact that there, the trial went through, uh, the judge threw out the evidence that the uh, I feel that the whole thing is ridiculous. If any of us had harassed, uh, threatened, or intimidated anyone, those are all criminal acts. And if we did do those things, they should have filed criminal cases against us. And it's even more telling, it's interesting, that they filed a civil case asking for money. So I find that uh, very fascinating. And it, it is kind of it, it's kind of oh, ridiculous in a sense that it's even gotten this far. So how do you feel today when it's a matter of speech or it's a matter of government? Well, my motivation is to fill people's parking meters to save people from getting tickets. But in that process, there's conversations that happen. And some of the Robin Hooders have been out on the streets for hours in, you know, relatively you close proximity, meaning a few feet away from me. Yeah, it's a conversation. And if I tell those people how I feel about what they do, which I think they're, so, you know, they're threatening. Yeah, one's every one's every one's ticket one's that's one's left one's on one's somebody's one's windshield one's is a threat to steal that person's car. So if I let that parking enforcer know how I feel about their job, they get offended by that because they don't want to feel like they're threatening people. They don't want to feel like they're, they're doing a bad thing. I think they are, and it's certainly my freedom of speech to be able to express that. And in their own job description, which is probably not going to hit the I'm sorry they don't like me calling them a thief, but that's what they do. They steal from people. They steal from cars. Thank you. Thanks. Can you copy that? I'll keep in touch with you. Nice to meet you too. This is the ACLU attorney, Gilles Bissonnette. Oh, cool. We've never met. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad he's here. Yeah, we were talking about the... How did you think it went? I think that went pretty good. Uh, I, I think Charlie Bauer uh, did not have a good case. He didn't present it well. And John Meyer was spot on. FPP.cc. Uh, one of the points that I thought would have been most important to bring up during this uh, hearing that was only brought up at trial was that there are safety issues raised by Robin Hooding, and that is that there are some thugs in the city of Keene that will attack Robin Hooders, and we have video documentation of this. Um, they will do it thinking that the parking enforcers are on their side or cool with it or something. Parking enforcers have called the police for our safety multiple times. They've never called the, well, uh, no one's ever called the police out of, as far as I know, out of concern for their safety. So uh, I believe in keeping people safe. I'm actually the, the person who manages Keen Peaceful Streets, which is a community organization to raise awareness for crime and issues of just quality of life in Keen. And uh, so the safety issue raised by Robin Hood is never a reaction to the